Are you sick of paying for windows just so you can remove that annoying watermark and set your own wallpaper? Or maybe you just don't want Microsoft tracking you or you resent them for constantly trying to force you to use Bing? Linux Mint might just be the operating system for you. And unlike other Linux distributions that can have a fairly steep learning curve, Mint bills itself on being very easy to migrate to, even if you've only ever used Windows. But is it right for you? And what should you know before taking the plunge? The first most important thing to know is that Mint comes in three different variations that are officially called flavors, which I mean, makes sense for an OS called Mint, right? You've got Cinnamon, which is a full featured operating system and looks the nicest. Mate or Mate, which I think is what it's really pronounced, which has fewer features, but is faster and more stable. And XFCE, which is even lighter than Mate. I was kind of hoping that there'd actually be flavors, you know? Like we've got cinnamon, why couldn't we have had like, I don't know, cherry or blueberry or, or like chocolate? Oh well. Anyway, for most people, cinnamon will be the way to go. With the other two flavors, more for users needing extra stability for some specialized applications or for folks who are running very low spec hardware or I mean, just plain prefer the older style interfaces. In fact, Mint actually recommends just four gigabytes of RAM and 100 gigabytes of free disk space for optimal performance. So yeah, even Mint Cinnamon is not at all hard to run on any reasonably modern computer. And it can be a great way to breathe new life into an older PC that you just have lying around. Setup is also pretty similar to Windows. You just create a bootable USB and insert it into your PC and start it up. And then you follow the instructions and you're done. But once you have it set up, what can you do with Mint? And how does it compare to Windows? We'll tell you right after we thank Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Christmas is right around the corner and their new Performance Package 4.0 will make a great gift. It includes their waterproof and cordless lawnmower 4.0, their weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer for tricky trimming, and their crop preserver and crop reviver for your deodorizing and hydration needs. For a limited time, you also get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Don't wait, go to manscaped.com and use promo code TECH for 20% off your order plus free international shipping. Although we're not saying that Windows is a bad operating system, I mean, I would, Mint does actually have the advantage of being generally more stable than Windows. For starters, there just aren't as many pieces of malware written for Linux out there in the wild. And Linux doesn't just give programs run by the user the same permissions to go meddling around in the file system that Windows can, at least not by default. But Mint specifically has another trick up its sleeve to make it more stable. Mint's update cycle tends to be rather conservative. So the odds of an update wreaking havoc on your system are quite low, especially if you use the Mate or XFCE flavors. The trade-off is that some of the very newest hardware or software may not work as intended if you're an early adopter. But for most casual users, it shouldn't be an issue, especially if you use flat packs. But it's not just about stability. It's also about usability. Mint has support for all the major modern audio and video formats. Just make sure you check the box to install the relevant codecs automatically during installation. As far as doing things outside of a web browser, Mint comes with a well-regarded software manager that lets you download tens of thousands of programs from a repository. Kind of like the App Store or Play Store, or I guess even the Microsoft Store for Windows, except you'll actually use this one. And these aren't just Linux substitutes for well-known programs either. There's Steam, Blender, and Skype all available on Linux as well. And as in Windows, there are quite a few user-friendly customization options to make the OS look and feel the way you want. But even if you change nothing, Mint does have a similar feel to Windows out of the box with a taskbar and start menu. So you'll probably won't be left scratching your head as to how to accomplish most basic tasks. Even gaming is surprisingly doable on Mint, as Steam has thousands of titles compatible with Linux and Mint's driver manager will also keep your graphics card drivers up to date. To top it all off, Mint functions without collecting your data like Microsoft's faced criticism for doing in recent versions of Windows. But remember that as popular as Mint is, we're not necessarily saying to go out and immediately ditch Windows. I mean, remember that Mint is still a fundamentally different operating system. And there are some Windows programs that just do not have Linux equivalents, unfortunately. So if you really do need to run one of those applications, you'll need to use some kind of compatibility layer or emulator even, and performance with those can be hit or miss, although Wine has gotten pretty good in recent years. Similarly, although Steam now has an impressive library of Linux compatible games, many others do not play nicely with Mint, especially if you're trying to use a different installer such as Origin. 
So if there's a title that you really want to play, check to ensure it's supported before taking the minty plunge. Anti-cheat is still a big problem. There are even some games that have Linux versions that are actually fairly buggy, and Linux users who know their stuff will want to use the Windows version in Wine or Proton to get around this. But what about Ubuntu, another free Linux distro that many have also lauded as being friendly for beginners? Like Mint, it's also quite popular and is what Mint is actually originally based on. But it has a few quirks that are leading us to recommend Mint instead if we were picking between the two for, you know, the beginner type of user. Ubuntu's user interface is much less similar to Windows than Mint, so it might take a little longer to get used to. And it also collects telemetry data that might make it less appealing to folks concerned about privacy. Ubuntu also has a walled garden of sorts in their software distribution platform called Snap. Downloads from Snap often take a little longer to run as they contain extra files that should allow them to run on any Linux distro. It's not a bad idea, but this means that you get less control over exactly what is downloaded to your PC. Snap is also controlled by Canonical, the company that develops Ubuntu, which has made lots of Linux enthusiasts concerned that Ubuntu might become a walled garden of sorts. So if all of this has made you decide to hop onto the mid train, I wish you luck but don't expect it to make your computer smell better. Only RGB can do that. Thanks for watching guys, like, dislike, check out some of our other videos, comment with video suggestions down below, and don't forget to subscribe and follow.